Hey there everybody, my name is Ryan, this is my Raspberry Pi Sprout. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Sprout Tutorials. Um, it's been a good long while since I've made a video, maybe two months, um, but I'm back here with something really cool. Uh, today we're looking at something called rsync and cron jobs. Uh, rsync is something that's going to help us back up data from one directory to another directory, or from one directory to an external drive, or even like a remote host. Um, rsync is really powerful. And what's better about rsync than traditional backup methods is that it um, only will copy information that has changed uh, unless you specify it to do otherwise. So it can save you a lot of time. And what cron jobs do is uh, they schedule the backup. So instead of me having to manually back up all the time, I can use a cron job to do that at a specific time. Uh, and we'll see a bit of that later. So let's get right into it. Um, the first thing we want to do is we're going to CD over, I'm going to CD to my opt, you can do this wherever you want. I'm going to make a couple directories uh, that display sort of um, how this works by giving you an example. So I'm going to also um, change, so, so basically I'm going to, in these directories, I'm going to put some things, but before I do, I'm going to C-H-O-W-N. I'm changing permissions. Uh, for my user Minecraft. Um, I use that for most of my non-root privileges, and you should probably do this not as root. I really don't recommend doing it as root user. And if you don't know how to make new users, I think it, what is it, sudo add user, and uh, it'll prompt you for a bunch of stuff. But we're not gonna do that, because I already got one. So I'm gonna do sudo chon, which is change owner. Um, it's gonna be Minecraft rsync1, and we're gonna do sudo chgrp, Minecraft rsync1, and then we'll do the same thing for two, we'll do the same thing for two. Okay, so we do a quick LSLA. Here is our rsync1, rsync2, and user Minecraft has permissions there. So let's uh, switch over to user Minecraft, and we're going to cd into rsync1, and uh, let's make some files. So we're going to do nano file1.txt, and we'll do hello, my name is sprout okay and let's make another one we'll do nano file 2.txt and we'll make this um it's wednesday Hooray. cool um cool so if we ls we'll see those are there and of course if we um ls into or cd into rsync2 there's nothing there so we're going to use rsync to move this uh to here from this directory to this directory uh, but first we need to write a script for that. So let's hop back over to Pi. I'm going to go into my scripts directory. This can be wherever it is for you. Uh, and I'm going to do sudo nano, and we're going to call this rsync underscore test dot sh. Okay, we'll do that. And um, I think I still have it saved. I just copy and pasted this. So you can you know pause the screen and write this down if you want. Uh, oops, hold on, wait. Oh gosh, okay. I did something there. Uh, let me get the directories right, because this is from an old tutorial. So we're gonna do opt dash. So this is our source directory. And then we also wanna put it to our rsync to our um, destination directory. So let's go through each one of these uh, with a nifty little tutorial that I found that I quite like um, on DigitalOcean. So let's go through each one. So rsync again, that is going to um, copy your files from source to destination directory. And again, what's nice about it is it will only copy things that have changed um, instead of just uh, brute forcing the copy every time. And you'll see what I mean about that later. Uh, next is gonna be this dash A, which stands for archive. Let's see if we can find that. Here we go. Um, so you probably know dash R. You've probably seen me use that a lot in my videos. What dash R does is it grabs all the stuff in directories. So if you've got like a directory in a directory in a directory, uh, dash R stands for recursive, and that will recursively get everything in the directory. Uh, what dash A does is it gets a little extra. It'll get things like modification times, groups, owners, permissions. Um, this is really important if you've got, you know, like a Minecraft server and things might be changing all the time. Um, so uh, I do dash A. And the next one is dash progress. I'm actually going to change that, though, uh, to something I learned from this tutorial. It's going to be dash P. Um, and you can see here, if we scroll down, yeah, the dash P flag gives you progress bar for transfers. So if we want to watch it, we can see this output here. 
and it'll also allow you to, um, if you have any interrupted transfers, it'll resume those, which is pretty cool. Sometimes things go wrong. Uh, and the last one here is dash delete. Guys, I really recommend you use this with caution. Um, you know, the word delete is a little abrasive anyway. Uh, but basically what this does, let's see if we can find it here. Um, yeah, if you want to keep your two directories truly in sync, I mean, if you want exact copies, um, what this command is going to do is it's going to delete any files in the destination directory that are not here, okay? And we'll see an example of that later. But again, if you just want to make some copies from one place to another, do not include this. But if you want absolutely perfect uh, mirror images of each other, then you use delete, okay? So you can take that out, it doesn't matter, it'll still work, but uh, we're gonna keep it in there anyway for sake of example, okay? So I'm gonna save this, control X, okay, make sure everything's good, yes, okay. So let's clear that, so now let's test it out. Um, I'm, oh, did I give permissions? Oh, I probably didn't, so let's do sudo, let's make it executable as well. Oh, gosh, I'm not in my directory anymore, okay, so cd opt scripts bash and I'm going to do sudo chmod this makes it executable or sync underscore test.sh and then we're going to sudo chown make sure user minecraft can run this um, or sync underscore test.sh and we're going to also do that for chgrp okay cool so again let's just ls minus la to make sure it's there is it our sync okay yep so just always check because things can go funny and sideways if you don't give certain permissions uh, okay so let's go here let's cd over to our scripts directory uh, cd bash that's where my bash scripts are and now we should just be able to run it let's see what happens cool there it is so you can see here's our little output from our dash uppercase p um, it showed you the speed and you know um, time and so on. These are just tiny little text files, so it happens instantly. Uh, and now what we can do too is let's do a quick, um, let's go into our uh, destination directory. Okay, so we'll do cd op dash rsync2. And cool, now we have these little files, which is pretty awesome. Right, we ls'd earlier and there was nothing there. Um, what we can do now is we can do ls dash ltr. And this is really neat because it shows you the time at which the file was modified. Um, and we only modified it once, which was at 1248. Um, so let's change those, and hopefully it will um, show us that it's different. So uh, actually, we're going to do that with a cron job example. So let's move on to cron jobs. So clear this. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to run something called contab dash. Well, actually, okay. So I'm going to change it first. Okay. So let's cd over to rsync2, because I don't want to rush. No, sorry, rsync1. Uh, sync one. Okay, so let's add a file. We're gonna do um, we'll do nano file three txt. Okay, we're gonna do hey there. Okay, and we're also gonna change file two txt. So let's do nano file two txt, and we're gonna do um, changing. It's Wednesday. Hooray! Okay, cool. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, cd over back into our scripts directory, and we're going to run that rsync file again. Okay, and now you see it didn't list file1.txt because we didn't change it, and that's what's really cool about rsync is that it saves you time in only copying over the files that changed. Okay, so if we cd over there again... Now we have file3.txt, and what's cool, let's run ls-ltr, okay? See, this did not change, so it still shows us the last time it was modified, but these did change. This is new, and this one changed. So it'll show you the time, which is pretty neat. One more thing before we move on to cron jobs. Um, let's delete a file in our source so we can, um, we can show you the delete function, okay? So uh, remember, delete is going to make a mirror copy. So if it's not in the uh, source directory, it will not go to the destination directory, okay? So let's see here. Uh, let's um, rm 
file3.txt. How about that? Okay. So one more time, go into our script cd scripts bash. Okay, let's do it again. Our sync underscore test.sh. Boom. Ah, see, deleting file three. So you guys probably get the idea here. You can probably skip ahead, but I just wanted to, you know, show you examples of these before you, you know, ruin things. Uh, and there we go. So we got file one and file two.txt, which is pretty cool. Now what we're going to do is we are going to um, do one more modification, and we're going to do a cron job uh, to schedule this. And you can kind of see how that works. So we're going to go back into our sync one, and we'll make a new file. We'll call this nano file four.txt. Okay, cron job test. Cool. You can call that anything you want. So now we've got a new file in here. We'll see if the cron job picks it up. So we're going to do cron tab dash e. Okay, so this is your cron tab page. Maybe you've been here before, maybe not. Um, but what's really cool about this is you can schedule cron jobs to run scripts or commands or really anything you want at certain times. So um, you can look at this long description here, but basically down here we've got minute, hour, day of month, no, is that right? Day of month, yes, month, and then day of week. So you, can, you guys can be really specific here. You see a couple of examples I have. I've already got our uh, bash script ready to go. We could do the 15th minute of the 10th hour of the, I don't know, 25th day of the, you know, I don't know, uh, what, day of the week? The third day of the week. Is that right, day of week? I'm lost here. Day of week, yeah, okay. Uh, but I don't need that sort of specific information. Um, and if you, I'm just trying to do it every day. So if you leave a star here, um, that is just going to, uh, what, how to say, it'll just do it. For, so for example, um, here I've got 15. So I wanna do it on the 15th minute of every hour of every day of the month, of every day of the week, of every month, of every day of the week, right? Um, so let's see this in action. Let's see if we can get 59 in here because right, it's 1258 right now on my computer. Um, so see, I've got file4.txt here. Let's cd over to our sync 2. Okay, it doesn't have file4, so let's wait for 59 to show up. And um, this is running in the background. And what's cool about cron jobs is you don't have to reset your computer. It just you know picks it up, which is pretty neat. So we're going to wait. We're going to wait. Let's make sure we got it right again. We'll go into cron tab. Right, so we have down the 59th minute of every hour, of every day of the month, of every month, of every day of the week. Okay, cool. And let's make sure we've got it opt. And you have to write the path to your script that you're writing, okay? Okay, so we're waiting, waiting. I may fast forward this, we'll see. Okay, there we go, it's 59, so if we do ls, oh dude, there it is, file4.txt, that's so cool. And if we ls minus ltr, we can see um, the time at which it was created, file4 was created, right? So what's really cool is, um, I'll show you guys my Minecraft directory. I do this with my entire directory, okay? I do it um, with the whole thing, and let me cd over to the directory which I put it in. Um, uh, let me do ls minus ltr. So if you're doing this for Minecraft, it's pretty cool because your Minecraft server, there's only a couple of things that change like every single day, specifically the world directories. But like, you know, I think July 25th is probably when I made this thing. So like, you know, this hasn't changed, the EULA hasn't changed. So, you know, you're just going to waste a lot of time and energy and resources doing hard copies every time you want to back up. What's cool about rsync is it only transfers over the things that have changed, which is pretty awesome. Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. I'm glad to be back and hope to uh, upload some more videos. See you, see you uh, next time.